The Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research has recorded cases of children contracting COVID-19 with virologists from KCC, our Dr. Michael Owusu, for more on this. Uh, Doc, I'm grateful for your time. From KCC, our, how many children have been infected with COVID-19? Yeah, good evening, uh, Aisha. So uh, the data we have seen I mean, corresponds to what the Ghana service announced uh, through their communication. I mean, the whole month of January, uh, from zero up to 12 years, we've screened about 83 of them, and we have just something around 10 or 11 uh, being positive uh, for, for the virus, which is consistent with national data that has been presented by the Data General of the, of the Ghana Health Service. And with this 10 out of 83, what would you say are their conditions? Are they asymptomatic, severely ill? I mean, are they symptomatic? Well, few, uh, few of them are asymptomatic, but uh, I think close to about six uh, or seven of them were, were, were presenting with some mild cough and some mild fever. But I understand that they are well. Uh, and uh, they were just for a short period uh, and they are fine. I mean, from what we understand in children, most of the times it will cause some mild fever and cold in them, but they soon get well. But the challenge is that because the, um, the virus is able to multiply and replicate at high levels in them, it means that they are able to transmit effectively to adults. So the worry is that, I mean, although they may get well and be fine, but then their parents some way, somehow, we pick it up from these children, and they are the people that are likely to suffer uh, from, from the virus. Um, the last time I spoke with you, you made mention of the fact that the new variants are being detected in children, correct? Yes, I mean, uh, I, I understand from a conversation with my colleagues in Noguchi and Wagbik that the new variant is highly, highly predominant and close to about 65% of routine cases that are coming uh, seem to be from the UK variant. And most of this includes children who are presenting with signs and symptoms of COVID, either they are coughing uh, or have chest pains or, or have fever. So I uh, really, I mean, the new variant is wide across. It's not really including children, middle age and adult. And this time it looks as if uh, they appear more sick than what we used to know before. Initially, most of them were asymptomatic. And we all, it looks as if even the young population contract the virus, they may fall sick for a short period. And even for some of them, they may progress to the level of having breathlessness, which will require them to be put on oxygen. So this is the kind of changing phase of the virus. But I think that we need to do more study to see how the clinical presentation of the new variant vary from the old ones and see whether the symptoms and signs are similar or not. I mean, in UK, other people are beginning to record that the new variants come with some classical symptoms, including tiredness, muscle pains, fever, and fatigue whereas the old stream was more of loss of taste or loss of smell or loss of appetite. I believe that maybe by end of the month or towards close of next month, we will gather enough data on this to be able to inform the public as to whether the new variants come with clear clinical presentation, which are different from the old ones, or the two are similar. I think that as we accumulate data, we'll be able to tell better how the picture looks like. You have expressed concern with the numbers, the figures that we're recording daily over 700 cases daily. And you say if it continues like this, government would have to trigger the second phase of restrictions to stem the spread. At this moment, do you feel any difference that we are making progress? I can tell more in the next one to two weeks I mean, from the early uh, announcement of the president. If you have monitored his statement, we moved from 200 average cases move to 700 average case within a period of about two weeks. So in two weeks to come, if the new cases double to 1,400 and our active cases hit a double close to 10,000, then it will be very, very necessary for the president to step in with the second level of restrictions. And my biggest fear is the new strain. I mean, if we allow it to run its natural course and cause more people to be sick, it's going to overburden the health sector. And if we don't take a we may lose many lives. And one of the strategies is that if the new strain is moving at a faster pace than what you can do, then you have to halt population movement so that you can slow its spread. And then you'll be able to manage places where it has not seeded yet 
so you can protect the lives of people. So I believe that um, we should all do our best, maintain the protocol and keep what we have and if possible reduce the numbers we are seeing. But I believe strongly that if these numbers double up, the president will have no choice but to trigger a second higher level of restrictions that will enable us to contain this virus spread and to bring some relief to the health sector so people don't overburden themselves, people don't become infected. We don't even uh, prevent other people who may have other non-COVID related illness from getting access to health. Okay. These are all things that I think that we have to manage together so that we don't have many people dying from, from this. Dr. Oso, it's actually scary that um, children have had to go under oxygen. And uh, from the look of things, uh, would you say we should wait a bit more to trigger, for instance, the closure of schools? Or you want to shut down as early as possible? Well, I think that uh, a shutting down of schools is one of the last resorts that you want to put in as a measure. And uh, always, as for what many countries have done, you want to weigh your mitigation measures against the outcomes. So you have the numbers on one side, looking at how the numbers are playing out, whilst you are enforcing the protocols, people washing their hands, people wearing masks, people adhering. And as people step up the interventions, you want to hope that it will result in a reduction in your new cases and active cases. But then if a week or two, although you are putting in all your intervention, it's not resulting in any change in your outcomes, then you have to move in quickly. And as I said, at closure, I wish schools never close. But then when you get to a point to keep people safe, is to impose a restriction that will enable us to guard and protect the lives of the young. For now, I think it may be too early, but we need to monitor the numbers and see how the next two weeks will look like. And I believe that if the picture looks worse after two weeks, it will be necessary for us to, um, I mean, close down, especially those that are five years and below. Because these people are children that will not be able to, by themselves, adhere to the protocol. They may not be conducive environment for them to interact. And it will be difficult for you to at least manage them. But they, they may serve as a conduit and route through which adults will become infected. So it will be very important to look at these groups and see how best we can restrict them in order not to um, allow the virus to spread uh, and go uh, out of hand.